Alright, so welcome back to the channel guys, it is me, ADs from Wolf 4. So, today guys, I'm going to give you guys my reaction to all three of the games. Now, I'm sorry I didn't do a individual match review, guys, I just didn't have enough time for today, you know, with all the classes, I mean, being in college and everything. So, I decided, you know what, how about we just combine all three of the games into one video? It'll be a lot easier on my part, and I hope you guys do understand. So, like I said, I'll be doing this from now on, for every day of the World Cup that... Once all the games are done for the day, I'll do like a quick match reaction. And the reason why this is coming even later than normally would be just because of the fact that obviously I was on my friend's stream earlier um, today in Mike Talks Football. And so that's why I joined. I started a bit late. So I watched the highlights of the three games. And yeah, we're ready to get started, man. Ready to get started. So there'll be time in the description below um, for your convenience. And yeah, we're going to go ahead and get started. So let's start with the first game, guys. Let's start with the first game. England versus Iran. England versus Iran. So... We're starting uh, now. So the first thing I'm going to say right now is this with this game. England looked great. I think for me in particular, I think Bellingham was fantastic today in the midfield. He was dominating the midfield. And I think Bellingham is just showing his quality, what he, he can do as a player, you know, scoring that header. Bukayo Saka, I thought, was really good today. I thought he was really class today. Um, I thought he was very good. Um, obviously, I think, um, who else? Um, Sterling also was really good on the day, too. And England just looked fantastic. I mean, this is a performance from England that we just haven't seen in a while. England being this crazy. And it's actually really interesting that England scored six goals. They haven't scored because in the Nations League, they only scored four goals. They have scored more goals today than they did in the Nations League, which is incredible. As for Iran, man, they looked really bad. I, sorry, they looked defensively shambolic. Um, and I expected more from Iran. I really expected more from them. Um, they did score two goals as a consolation, so at least it wasn't a complete rut out or blowout. Um, obviously, Taremi scoring a brace there from one for the penalty spot for the Eric Dyer challenge. And then obviously, the first one was a quality goal, quality G. But Iran, man, uh, Carlos Quiroz, man, um, why did he set the team so defensive? I understand that you're trying to like get the nil nil draw, but the thing is, like, this is England. And we saw England had lapses in concentration. England's defense isn't all that amazing, spectacular. Yes, it is difficult to break them down, but. They're not like, it's not like, you know, it's not like Italy in 2006, you know. It's not like they, they have that kind of defense. So, I feel like um, Iran should have been a bit more uh, adventurous and attack-minded and not try to sit back and try to, like, you know, go for the draw and everything like that. And so, Carlos Curious, man, a lot of questions are asked and you have a, they have a very interesting game against Wales in which they have to basically win that game. Because, um, we'll get to the USA in a bit, um, but, um, yeah, it's a must-win game for yeah. Um, them in particular and uh, as for England man they looked great they looked great I was really impressed with them I think England looked great Saka was great on the day Bellingham was great Sterling Kane was also pretty good too with his two assists and overall England just looked fantastic I was just really impressed with them and let's just see if England can love up to the building because obviously they have crucial games coming against England I'm sorry against uh, USA and Wales and um, as I said if England can beat the USA which they should let's be real they'll clinch a spot in the round of 16 of the World Cup. So, like I said, um, huge, huge win for England, and um, yeah, huge win. So, uh, like I said, I'm not gonna, I don't really have any further thoughts on this. You guys can tell me your thoughts in the comment section below. We're going to go ahead and move on to the next game. Next game we have here, it is um, Netherlands to Senegal now. Senegal were fantastic on the day. Senegal really played their skin out. They played like warriors on the day, but Senegal just don't have the final end product. That's my problem with Senegal, is that they're such a well-organized team, but they just can't score goals. It's a huge issue. And if you don't score goals, you're going to get punished. And we saw that today that Netherlands, they made so good changes. I think De De Frankie Dion was fantastic in the midfield. He was money, man. He was absolutely balling in the midfield. And you've been seeing what how good he can be. Like, um, Obviously, at Barcelona, he's not been able to fulfill his potential just because of um, the system that he's being played. Because obviously, he's been playing more as a CDM recently than... Um, obviously then as a, um, I'm trying to find a pencil here. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can find, sorry guys. Uh, I'm trying to find a pencil real quick. Okay. I'll just use this pen for now, I guess. But yeah. Um, but anyways, back to what I was saying, man, with, um, Netherlands and ne Netherlands looked great. Um, and then obviously Edouard Mendy, man. Edouard Mendy was terrible today. I'm sorry. Edouard Mendy was terrible for that first goal. Oh man. The header. And then the second goal was a disgrace. Save the rebound. It wasn't even a good shot, and he should have he should have comfortably grabbed. I'm I'm sorry, Edouard Mendy, man, you have been terrible, and I think we've been seeing why he's been benched at Chelsea, 
and Kepa, Kepa started ahead of him. And, dude, I'm sorry, man. Edouard Mendy, man. Disaster class in goalkeeping. And Senegal, man, they really honestly should have got that draw. That draw was a fair result. But ultimately, Netherlands pulled through with two crucial goals from David Klassen and obviously uh, Cody Gakpo. And so, big, big win for the Dutch. And, um, yeah, as I said, man, um, for Senegal, man, it's going to be interesting to see what they do against Ecuador because that's going to be a big game. That's going to be a big game to determine second place because let's be real, guys. Qatar, man, they're finishing bottom. They're finishing bottom. All right, and now the final game. The final, final game. Oh, boy. As you can see with my jersey, guys, I'm a USA fan. And this feels devastating. It feels devastating. It feels as though that we should have, like, won this game. And it feels so annoying. Like, because now I'll get to the permutations in a bit. Uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, this was a great bad, a disappointment. Because I saw the USA starting 11. It looked glass. You know, we had, obviously, Sargent, uh, Weya, Pulisic, McKinney, Musa, Adams, the MMA midfield. And then the back line, Anthony Robinson, Zimmerman, Tim Bream, center um, goalkeeper, Matt Turner, right back. I mean, it was perfect. The 11 was perfect. That's actually the 11 I wanted. And we played so well the first half. That first half, we were so good. Christian Pulisic, Eunice Musa, um, it was fantastic on the day. I thought, um, for me, um, Tim Bream and Zimmerman did a great job. Anthony Robinson was great, too. And that first goal, man, it was a quality G from Timothy Way. And I'm telling you guys, remember the name Timothy Way. Because a lot of non-neutrals that don't really follow the USA are, ah, uh, look at Christian Pulis, like, look at Gia Reyna, you know, Weston McKinney. But no one talks about Timothy Weah. And I've said this before, guys. Timothy Weah is one of our most crucial players to this team. He's a very underrated player. And I haven't seen the USA play this good since we played against Mexico in the World Cup qualifiers. And that was crazy, man. The fact that we were able to manage to do that was crazy. Because these last couple of games this year in particular, I've just not been impressed with the USA. Just not been impressed. And then I don't know what happened in the second half. Second half, USA just completely fell. They were terrible in the second half. Uh, Wales coach Robert Page made some good substitutions, bringing Akifa Moore on, take Dan James off. Dan James had a disaster class. He was terrible on the day. Let me just say this. Nico Williams was also bad in the first half. And you could see how Wales wanted it more. They were growing for the ball. Um, they were making those slide challenges. They were going for the ball. They forced some good saves from that turn. And then right at the end, it looked like when everything was going to go good, Walker Zimmerman made that clumsy challenge on Gareth Bale and upstep Gareth Bale. And you know Gareth Bale's going to score the penalty. You know he ain't going to miss this penalty. It's a crucial, crucial moment for him. And Gareth Bale salvages a point for Wales. And he, in fact, Wales honestly could have easily won this game right at the end with Brennan Johnson and Kiefer Moore missing those chances late on. Uh, but ultimately, it finishes level 1-1. And it feels as though that this is a game we should have won. It really does feel as though. Because now we're in a position that we need to hope that you run Wales tie. Because if either if Wales win, they're on four points. And if England beat the USA, which the, they're expected to do, England will be on six. You, um, Wales will be on four. And then um, we'll be on one point. And then they'll, on, um, what is it called? Iran will be on zero points. And then Wales, they play on the final match day. Guess what? Against England. And Wales know England the most of any of these three nations. And I can bet you that Eng Wales can, can get a point. I bet you Wales can get a point against England. Wales can qualify with five points. And that's how paramount this game was for us, is that how important it was. Because now with the draw, we're in a really tough position. Because we now need to hope that it either ends in a draw or Iran win. Because if Iran wins against Wales in match day two, Iran will be on three points. And then obviously it'll be a one point. And then um, Wales will still be on one point. So then we'd have to basically beat Iran in the final match day. But that's hoping that England can get a draw against Wales. And we can't hope that Wales obviously wins. So it's a very tricky position. It makes the group a second place battle really interesting, this group. And I'm disappointed, man. I'm gutted, man. I'm gutted. So as I said, um, that's pretty much it. You know, short video. I um, remember, guys, tomorrow, guys, we're going to be doing a watch along for the Mexico-Poland game. So I should saw you should saw you guys there. <laughs> I'm going to see you guys there, hopefully. Um, and then obviously on Thursday, we'll be doing our World Cup match day one. We actually will react to all the games. Um, on Thursday at 4.30 p 4 p.m. Eastern Time, obviously. And then on Sunday, I mean, not Sunday, Friday, the day after, we'll be doing a USA-England World Cup watch-along on the channel. <laughs> it should be interesting, to say the least. So, hope you guys did enjoy. Uh, like I said, let me know your thoughts on all three of the games. Comment section below. Um, if you guys are new around here, consider that subscribe button. Like this video if you enjoy. Comment down below your thoughts. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.